Hey, everyone. It's Andy Petrillo, Jordan Wilson, Oliver Platt here on One Soccer. All right, Canada soccer fans, you've probably heard the rumors by now. And that, of course, we're hearing that the Canadian men's national team head coach, John Herdman, has agreed in principle to coach the All Whites, the New Zealand national soccer team, the men's side, that is. Uh, Ollie, first things first, because we heard rumors of Herdman heading into the World Cup uh, 2022. Uh, would he turn pro as a head coach? And, you know, the, the belief, of course, was that those were just rumors. Of course, they were. He was the head coach for the men in Qatar. But is there validity to these rumors? Yeah, I think there's validity there. The, the story is legitimate i think it comes from a reputable source something is going on here i think it's safe to say the question is exactly what is going on and you know there's some kind of some details in the story that you know are, are a little strange i think in terms of uh you know the, the report is that herdman is the preferred candidate the, the federation without naming who it is says that preferred candidate is 100 percent on board and is, is committed but a contract isn't signed yet there's also mentioned maybe a personal situation that's delaying that so it's all um kind of a little bit hazy in, in that sense, but I certainly think there's some some smoke here. Um, you know, reaching out to, to people around Canadian soccer today, some some sources at the CSA, the, the general sense was that this has blindsided everyone. This is a complete surprise. Um, I don't think people saw this coming. Um, there's, you know, the suggestion that's out there that I've seen on social media is also being suggested behind the scenes, which maybe this is kind of contract negotiations, a bit of leverage. I do think that John Herdman wants a new contract. His agent will, will expect you know, him to be rewarded uh, for the work he's done over the past few years, taking Canada to a World Cup, raising the profile of this program and all the success that we've seen you know, in CONCACAF qualifying and, 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 and reaching the World Cup. So I think that's certainly a situation where you know, there, there, there will be an expectation there that the terms will be improved, the deal will be renewed. Um, and, and that this could potentially play into that. I, I don't know that. That's, again, just relaying what, what I've been told. But, um, yeah, certainly there, there's something going on here, and I think it's just going to be about kind of figuring out as it unfolds how solid this really is um, in terms of Herdman potentially looking elsewhere. Worth noting that he is signed through 2026, but to your point, yeah. this is not something we haven't seen before when somebody wants their contract renegotiated. Oftentimes, agents can plant stories, and, and that's where a lot of people are going, is this real, or you know, is this a case of wanting to renegotiate a new deal? But when you do look at the sources, it does make you raise a bit of an eyebrow, and I'm wondering, Jordan, your initial reaction to hearing this news. I was surprised. Um, very surprised. I, I did a little Jamaican kiss teeth up and I had my phone <laughs> and I was like, no, because for me, it just, it's, it screams that he might be feeling undervalued. Again, I'm speculating. I don't know for sure, but he's made it known so many times how he feels about Canada. Um, he's shown what he is to this group. If you ask the players, they rally behind him. I, for me, he deserves a new deal. And I think that this is, this is him maybe making a cry out and saying like, look, like if you don't want to pay me, I'm, I have to, I have to look elsewhere, which happens in the game. If you're, if you're a person who has made it known what you want to do and have also contributed to a nation or to a club, whatever it may be, you, you want your payout. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone, you know, would be surprised at the end of the day, anyone be you a coach of a national team pro team or you know somebody whatever job that you have bottom line is you stay where you are when you feel valued so you do wonder if there's that you wonder if it's also just wanting another opportunity and I think this is where maybe some people Ollie have some questions because there was always a belief that if John Herdman were to ever leave Canada soccer that he would enter the world of the pro game are yeah. you maybe surprised that the rumor we're hearing is that he's going to another national team and that national team happens to be New Zealand? Yeah, I think that's probably the surprising part. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that he's considering his options. <laughs> Hello, Pepper. Sorry, G Ginger wants... <laughs> Ginger, sorry, wrong one. This is how big this story is, that Ginger wants to get involved as well, <laughs> wants yes. Wants to get a take in there. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm not surprised that John Herdman is considering his options. I think any international manager, when you go through a full World Cup cycle, um, is, is going to be pretty exhausted, I would imagine. It's, it's a lot, right? And, and, and international football can be a lot. Then you get into the context of Canada. I totally agree with Jordan. I think John Herdman will want to feel that, you know, the work he's done is, is properly recognized and rewarded. I personally would give him a new contract. I think he, he's earned that and deserves it for, for the work he's done so far. So that comes into it as well. 
you also know we, we all work in Canadian soccer. We know that there's frustrations, there's problems, there's things that you think are holding you back sometimes. We saw all of that last year come out and that I think can be very tiring as well. So for Herdman to be, again, considering his options, thinking about other opportunities, thinking is it maybe time to move on from, from the Canadian men's national team, that would not surprise me. But like you said there, what, what does surprise me is that this would be where he goes. Um, I think we all expected that a club opportunity would be what he would really be looking for as the next step. And I think even if he was to stay in international football, I, I don't know. I don't know. To, to be blunt, I would expect that he could maybe get a job at a higher ranked team than this. Um, mm-hmm. Like when you compare, no disrespect to New Zealand, obviously an absolutely beautiful country to live in, a, an opportunity to maybe build a program in the same way that he's done with Canada. I can understand the appeal of that, but you look at what he's got with Canada, like he's got world-class players, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, Stefan Eustachio. He's got the opportunity to qualify for the Copper America next year, which is going to be the biggest tournament along with the European Championship until the next World Cup. Um, he's got the opportunity to coach a team that is co-hosting the 2026 World Cup. That team, if the uh, the seeding goes as it has done for previous World Cups, will be in pot one. We'll have a great chance of going to the knockout stage of that tournament. Like to leave all of that behind for a New Zealand job where you, you, you're going to a team that is ranked quite a bit lower, does not have the same kind of quality, just because you maybe see an opportunity to build a program there or whatever it is, th- that to me doesn't fully add up. And that's why I think there's 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 got to be more than meets the eye here. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. what that could be. Obviously, in the story, you know, a personal situation was mentioned. There could be something there. We don't know. Maybe it's a financial decision if New Zealand are able to offer more money. Again, I don't know that. Um, maybe it's it's it is to do with his contract as as has been speculated. That, that there could be could be any one of those things. But to me, straight up as a footballing decision, I would be really surprised if John Herdman decided to leave Canada behind for the New, Ze- New, Ze- New Zealand job. And only John Herdman can answer these questions. But yeah. a lot of fans, just like us, are chiming in because you hear this news and you're starting to wonder again: it, are these rumors valid? Uh, and this is what some of the people are saying. Uh, would be a step down for him. You know, doesn't make sense with Gold Cup, likely Copa America, as you mentioned, World Cup uh, coming up in the cycle. And it also happens to be a home World Cup 2026. Um, Electric Chatter said, yes, please. That was in you know reference to me saying we're going to have something soon and then proceeded to say, if it's fake news, whoever's responsible owes me a bowl of Cheerios <laughs> as mine went soggy trying to figure out if this is true. Uh, Brian saying, I'll believe it when I see it. You know, cause, you know, so he builds up the national program leads them to World Cup qualification, then leaves before they're to host for the next World Cup to go to a nation ranked 50 spots lower. If he moves, it's a European club, not New Zealand. That doesn't make sense. That seems to be the common theme is that it doesn't make sense if it happens to be New Zealand. Not if he moves on, because again, we've had this conversation before with Herdman. It's New Zealand. So if there's thing, other things at play there, that is something only John Herdman can answer. But Jordan, from a player perspective, you're hearing this now. What's the Canadian men's national team player chat looking like at the moment? They're gutted if, if, it, if it's true. Now, with just to echo a bit with what Ali was saying, um, Herdman has taken the squat and all the hard parts. Like when I was a kid, I hated eating like Brussels sprouts and all those things, but I would do it first so I can enjoy <laughs> my steak and whatever after, right? I still kind of eat that way. That's how I feel with John Herman. All the, he had this country when people did not believe they could go to a World Cup. He's taken them now to a place where this is a squad that is exciting to watch. It would be very nice and fitting to see him reap the rewards for the next two, yeah, three, four years. Yeah, this is the good bit. Yeah. This is the good bit. He's like, missing out he's, on the steak. He's missing out on <laughs> br- what's Brussels sprouts and, and mashed potatoes. That's nothing, Andy. You got to get the steak or the meat at the end. And this is that. So it's it, it would be so disheartening. I think also, too, what I want to talk about is you can't fake the chemistry. When when you lose a match or when the, the boys went to Qatar and the way they they all hugged each other or, or Herman mm-hmm. went to them. You can't fake that stuff. The, the chemistry is real within that camp. That brotherhood is real. You hear guys whispering about how um, players would come in and play for Canada, go into the camp, and they're like, yeah, if you're here, you're here for, for keeps. Like, this is not a, ooh, we'll see what Canada's like. And that's the culture that he created and cultivated. So I, I think they're gutted, if, mm-hmm. to say it plainly. 
And you kind of alluded to what he's also meant to this program in general, right, Ollie? He's been with Canada Soccer for over a decade, beginning with the women and leading them to that historic bronze in 2012 at the Olympics. Uh, and we know the success that the women's program had under him and now continues to have under Bev Priestman, who was an assistant under John Herdman. We know what he's done for the men's team. He's really progressed the program. If, I'm just continuing to say if, this is all speculation rumors, he were to leave, is there a concern that all that progress will get stalled or even regress? I think there has to be at least some concern. Um, I think it would be kind of disrespectful to John Herdman to say otherwise, because quite frankly, aside from Bev Priestman, who has now taken up the mantle from him, he is the only person who has really had sustained success with either the men's national team or the women's national team in the program's history, right? Like, it's, it's as simple as that. Um, Canada have not che- achieved an awful lot prior to John Herdman's arrival outside of, of, of obviously the 1986 World Cup. So you can't underestimate that. You can't underestimate the impacts he's had on the program, um, the way he's transformed some of the professionalism, the attitudes, the belief in the program brought the teams together in, in, in an incredible way. Um, that would, would obviously be hugely missed. And I think, look, everyone who's watched these teams over the last few years would want John Herdman to continue, would want him to take this Canadian men's national team into the 2026 World Cup. That being said, I would also say that we're, we're in a different place now. Thank, uh, in, in great deal, thanks to John Herdman, mm-hmm. where the, the Canadian game is different, right? Like we, we have great coaches in this country. We have more options. We have a league. We have, you know, all of these different things that have strengthened the game. I think if, if he decides that it's time to walk away, whoever it's to, I think we'll be okay. I, I think there's, there's going to be, you know, it's a really appealing job for someone to come into and take up and hopefully we can con- continue to move forward. But there's no doubt that there's going to be a bit of insecurity and anxiety when someone this influential, whenever it happens, um, decides to step away from Canada. Jordan, you're a great example as well of what Ollie's alluding to of how far the game has come. I mean, having played in the Canadian Premier League, you know the coaches as well who are working there. And, you know, obviously these are coaches that would like to move on too. We saw that with Pamadou Ka with Pacific after winning, you know, the championship there. I mean, do you also have, while honoring what John Herdman has done for the program, is there also a sense of comfort in knowing that there are coaches that have, you know, developed in this country? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Um, there are there are people that could do a great job. I think that it, it still does stall the progress just because I personally feel like there's unfinished business. Um, and I also want to just highlight a part that I think is crucial in today's game, which is the man management skills. And not everyone has the elite man management skills, but also as a player, for me, I played best for coaches that I trusted, that knew about my wife or girlfriend or whatever it might be that we had that bond. We've been through the trenches. We've lost. We've been to Qatar. Obviously I didn't go, but like players, when you have those, when you have those situations that, that builds a trust and, Mm -hmm. and you fight for obviously your country and the badge, but you fight for your gaffer, you fight for your, your, your coach. So it it would be a stall, but I think how long is just a different question, right? If someone knew where Mm -hmm. to come in, um, how quickly could they get, everyone on the same page and working for them. And that's a question none of us would know. But I would just love to see John Herdman finish what he started. But that's another question. I just mentioned some Canadian coaches here, but there are a lot of you out there. We've been seeing some of the responses right away. Carlo Ancelotti. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Again, these are all rumors. This is speculation. We're going to touch more on it, of course, on One Soccer today on February 2nd. If there's any more information that reveals itself, we'll touch on that with John Herdman and the latest rumors of him coaching the New Zealand men's national team. So be sure to tune into One Soccer today on February 2nd. We'll dive more into that. That's Jordan. Jordan Wilson, Oliver Platt, I'm Annie Petrillo. Thanks for tuning in.